and every one of you who have come to celebrate what God has done in his children. And so we just want to invite you as the body of Christ to make yourselves at home to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that he is due. And so we just want to be a witness to what God has done in those who are being elevated today. And we also want to celebrate them because we all have a part in the body of Christ. We all have an assignment. We're not just here for no reason. Amen. And so we thank God for those who have heard the call, responded, and are willing to move forward so that God can use them in a mighty way. Amen? Amen. 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 And so praise and worship is just that. We were created to worship and to praise God. Yes. Not to worship people, not to worship ourselves, Amen. but God. He's the focus and the center point of all that we do. So I invite you all to stand with us and join us as we worship God. Amen? Amen. 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 You can clap. You can get free. You can get a little elbow room. It's all good. And let's Amen. just look to, let's put our focus where it needs to be. And that's on the Father. We're not here of our own accord. Amen? Amen. We're here because he said so. We're here because he's faithful. We're here because he's good. We're here because he's just. We're here because he's kind. We're here because he's God. He's got a plan. We're all a part of that plan. So we just want to just worship him. Forget about whatever it was you thought about when you got here. And let's look to him. And I tell you, when you leave, it'll be better than you before you got here. Amen. 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 All right, clap.
So we have something to look forward to. Come on. Amen. Amen. And so all of this won't be for nothing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
mission and purpose. We got to understand it's not about the here and the now, but it's about what's to come. Jesus didn't die for nothing. He died so that we can enter in again into fellowship with the Most High God. And so I would encourage you today, I implore you today, think beyond this moment in time. Think beyond the temporal things and prepare yourself for the eternal. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. This is a day of elevation. This is a chance to sow into me. Please, if you came in and you did not receive an envelope, please raise your hand. We want to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to give. Uh, Perfect Will, can we help Deacon Her distribute these envelopes? We want to be able to give. Listen, today is elevation. This year at Perfect Will Ministries is the year of elevation. And there are six that will be elevated uh, this morning in this morning's service. We have two evangelists. Uh. We have two deacons. Uh. And we have two ministers. Uh. And what I'll tell you is that they have worked hard. They've been in training since the beginning of the year. They've gone over a lot of things that they need to know to be able to be effective ministers evangelists and deacons and they all did very very well 
So today, the reason, ergo, you all are here, to support your family members, support your friends, just know that they were excellent. Let me say this, let me say this, you can give God a hand for you. Let me say this, and this is what you'll find in church as well as way back in the Bible. In the Bible, in the book, in the, in the book of Zechariah, chapter three, the Bible says there Joshua was ready to be ordained as a high priest. And they said standing uh, before him was the angel of the Lord. But on the right, watch this, was Satan to accuse him. Right. Right. So what I'm saying to you this morning is as we elevate some of these, some of you might say, well, I know such and such, he, he used to curse people out all the time. I know so-and-so, he used to do, and as Satan was there to accuse him, look at uh, Zechariah chapter uh, 3, verses 1 through 3. The Lord stopped Satan, and he said, who shall lay, lay charge against my elect? Right. He said, is this not a brand that I cut out of the fire? Right. So it doesn't matter about what you think, what they did, or what they used to be. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah. Open the past and let so you can have your own ideas and say, well, I, you know, he used to do this and she used to do this. Well, guess what? They're new creatures. Come on, man. Amen. And a lot of people ain't standing up. The harvest is right, but the labor, a lot of people ain't volunteering right. Right. to do this right. because once you put your hand to the plow, everybody talked about collars and listen, I'm going to tell y'all, if y'all visiting right now, perfect will, y'all better get all the pictures y'all can get with all these people with collars because we don't wear a lot of collars here. I don't, that's, that's that's part of our attire or whatever, but I'm not one of those pastors. I'm a servant leader, right? To see me in this is going to be an ordination or a wedding or something like that. But the thing about that, that is, is once you put on a collar, you go to the gospel, man. That's what this collar is about. So again, I want to make that known uh, as we get ready. So this morning... Uh, is our fourth Sunday is our youth service. We always have a uh, one of our youth and or uh, just a regular person to come up to just encourage us. Right. But today the speaker man, this person is phenomenal. This person is close to my heart and pastor's heart. This person is grown. This is what I'm. This is the beauty of the gospel. I've been listen. I've been ministering to men for 25 years. Right. right? And these are men, I'm not talking about like church dudes. I'm talking about street dudes, Amen. like real men. And you go out and say, yo, brother, you a man of God. Man, why are you calling me a man of God? You don't, I don't care what you did. I'm like God. I see the beauty in what you can do. Amen. I'm calling for the man of God that's in you. Yeah. And it's so funny because I'll give a, I'll give the man of God that's coming today, when he stepped foot in his church, he told us, he said, I ain't no church dude. He said, I don't really do this whole church stuff. I ain't got nothing against it, but I ain't really no church dude. And I, and I love that. I said, okay, just, just keep coming. Just keep coming. And how many understand when that Holy Ghost hits you? You can forget about it. And brothers, and brothers, let me tell you something. And my man and God right there, that's my dude right there. Let me tell you something. The reason why Satan fights us so hard when we out there in the street doing all the things we big and bad enough to do. He knows that if we ever turn our hearts over to God, we ain't gonna be no joke. That's why he tries to stop us. And I'm a living witness for 25 years, many young men that caught a hold to God, man, women, y'all talking about, oh, I wish he would just pray. He just won't pray. And as soon as he catch hold, y'all gotta, gotta catch up to his, to his, to his paint legs. And man of God, that's what we are. We men of God that love God, on fire for God, ain't ashamed of God. Some people come in the way you know these cats out in the street as drug dealers, as brawlers, and you're sitting there crying. You're like, are they, are they crying? Yeah. yeah, they're crying. You better be glad they're crying. Because they could be doing something else. But they got the love of, the, of, of, of God in them. And today I am so proud to introduce to you to this man of God who said, man, that church stuff, man. But this, somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit grabbed him. One night we were training and this brother started praying. 
And this was a dude was like, okay, thank, thank you God for the food, let's eat. This dude started praying and prophesying and using words, and I just was on the line going like this. He caught it. And today, from this point, forevermore, he's one who's going to be ordained. One who's on fire for God, who loves God, who loves God's people, who loves his family, ain't ashamed for none of it. You're going to see the excitement and the exuberance that comes with this guy. And all I'm going to say is, and as soon as I say this, y'all going to know what it is. If he ever give you a hug, you better hold your breath. This brother right here, when he hug you, you going to know it. All six foot six, six foot seven, however tall he is. Big guy, he'll squeeze the life out of you because that's how much he loves you. I now introduce to some and present to others a very good friend and deacon elect. Amen. Deacon Nolan. Hallelujah. It's my turn to speak. It's almost a hundred people in the house. But I'm grateful. Thank you. Sorry. So let's start with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for using me as a vessel to deliver your word, that I might be a tool for your design. Thank you for bringing the people out. Thank you for what you're doing with regards to our lives. And stay in our lives, Lord. Allow us to serve you and understand your design for our life. And let this word that I have today be acceptable to you, Lord. And may it reach people where they are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So, maybe about two, maybe about a month ago, as I was sitting in the back, I uh, was tapped and said, Brother, it's your turn. <laughs> but at the time that I was made aware that it was my turn, I didn't realize that it was also this, this date, this actual day, which a lot of activity, a lot of uh, festive activity would take place. So I will be before you very briefly. And um, if there's a title, to be had for what I want to briefly talk about, it would be, you are sufficient. Mm. My God. Okay. So, if scripture that I would associate with this brief talk would be from the book of First Corinthians, chapter one, scripture 27. But God chose the foolish things of the world mm. To put the wise to shame. Mm. Jesus. He chose the weak things of the world mm. to put the powerful to shame. Right. So God has I'm sorry, if I had the mic here, could you still hear? Yeah, you could. So God has designed for everything he creates and purpose for every life. Yeah. <clears throat> As human beings, we all have things in common. As human beings, we all have things in common. We all need, we all want, we all hope. But at the end, by God, we all shall be judged for the lives that we've lived. 
These things being so, we all have an important decision to make. Will you permit God's purpose in your life? Come on now. So, when I come to this church five years ago, Word. it was, I thought by coincidence. Mm. My life mom, childhood, best friend, slash brother, was being um, married by this pastor. Didn't know him, but I was the best man. So I had to show up. <laughs> and uh, very briefly, so we had to we have a we had a session of um, appointments that we had to come because they were receiving marriage counsel before they were to be married. And I got to interact with this pastor. And he pretty, pretty, all right, guy, like, you know, he's a manly guy, and, you know, church was for Easter, for Christmas, to show off your clothes. Tell the that, truth. that was my experience. That, of course, that's not everyone's experience. But um, in, in encountering this pastor, it gave me a whole different outlook on what church possibly could look like. So, when I think about the commonalities of us as human beings, there's a connection that I'll make very briefly. You know, if you need enough, your needs will lead you to your wants. Come on. Amen. Can you say that one more time, please? Amen. If you need enough, your needs will lead you to your wants. Mm. Yes. And if you want enough, then your wants will lead you to your hopes. My God. So your hopes, circumstances in life will lead you to your hopes. Right. So as a young fella, I always had, I didn't seem to have too many needs, but I had a lot of wants. Come on. Yeah. And my wants led me to my hopes and my hopes didn't really transcend until I had children. Jesus. So, we can do a lot of things in life. We can make a lot of money. We can uh, live our lives as we so fit, choose to do so. Void of God. But you can only live but so long. Right. Right. Void of God, Amen. because your hopes will land you in need of God. Amen. Come on, Amen. come on. Jesus. Not if I try, brother. <laughs> but your hopes will land you in the need of God. Word. Word. So a lot of the things didn't die when I was young. But when I had children, I got a little tender. Yes. Because certain things were not within my means, mm. my control, mm. when it came to that in which I loved my children. Right. So that hope will take you to God because it's only at that point that you understand that it's not within your control. It's not at all within your control. How things turn, how, how things are. We can choose to 
choose what we desire and what we want, but our hopes, that's all we have is something different. Mm -hmm. You want a good life for each other. You want a good future for that in which you love. Right. So it's at that point that you begin to be open to the possibilities of God. My God. Man. Man. Talking good. So when you show up for God, it poses a doubt internal. I've done this, I've been there. I sh mm. I'm dirty. I'm dirty. I'm filthy. Yes. God has no need of me. I have need of God. Well, you are sufficient. You know, as I thought about this talk, it took me to the Bible to look at some examples, and I have three examples that I would like to share with you where the individuals, where the men of God felt that they weren't good enough. Come on. So, the first person I'd like to present is Moses. Yes. So, in Egypt, there was a people, God's people, the Israelites. Right. And the Israelites were in servitude to the Egyptians. That's right. And they were in such servitude in the Egyptians, the Egyptians had gotten so uh, accustomed to this, to, to this uh, authority or this oppression that they decreed that the midwives would uh, they were concerned that the population of the Israelites would over would overpopulate right. their land right. and that they would possibly right. take over. Yeah. So the decree by the Egyptians was whenever an Israelite had a male child, dispatch the child, yeah. kill the child. And the midwives being God-fearing women, they didn't do that. So the birth of a child that was supposed to be murdered lived. Come on. Man. Come on. And this child was raised as an Egyptian. He come up with means, raised within an Egyptian household. But when he got to a certain age, he realized that that was not his birth. Man. So what he did was he wanted to relate to his own kin folk, if you will. Okay. And um, circumstances led to circumstances, and Moses ended up murdering a person. Come on, come on. So, the outcry was great, and God heard the outcry of his people. And um, God chose Moses to be the people's champion. Set it up, Amen. set it up, Amen. set it up, Amen. set it up. Amen. Set it up. Amen. So, with this, Moses felt like he wasn't sufficient. Right. So much so that he told God, I've never been a good speaker. I wasn't one before you spoke to me, God. And I'm not one now, God. I am slow at speaking. Mm. And I can never think of what to say. Yeah. Well, we church people, we know how that story is. <laughs> yes, sir. So, I want to give you another example 
not going to be before you much longer. I believe play talk, make for play and understand. There it is. Bars. So the next man of God, Gideon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Gideon was from a tribe of the Israelites. He was one of the tribe of the Israelites. And the tribe in which he was from was called Manasseh. And this, uh, at this time, and at the time that he lived, he was in a place where um, the, the Israelite people, now the setting is, they're in the promised land that God had promised to them, but they had resorted back to their own ways and angered God. And God had taken his hands off the people. He allowed them to suffer. Well, the people, as we do when we don't listen, come on. They went back, they asked God to God help us. They cried to God for help yet again. And God being the God that He is. He said, okay, I'll help you. So he sent his messenger, an angel. That's to right, Gideon, that's right. The person he chose to deliver them. Right. Well, Gideon had a bad attitude. <laughs> Who knows? So when the angel came to Gideon, Gideon was in a wine press, high. Trying to hide from the Midianites because they were absolutely oppressing the people. So, in order for him to have a little something for himself, he had to go hide to do his work. <laughs> and when the angel of God came to him, he says, Kind of arrogant way. Is this the same God that delivered us from bondage out of Egypt? Come on. Amen. Come on. So the angel was patient because the angel was on the task for God. So Gideon says, well, if this is so, stay here while I go do something. I'll be back. He went to go uh, prepare an offering because he didn't believe that this was so. He didn't believe that the angel was from God. Amen. So Gideon went, he prepared his offering, his burnt offering. He came back. Angel told him, place it on the rock. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So uh -oh. he placed it on the rock. And the angel took his staff, touched the offering. It was consumed. Gideon was a believer, the angel disappeared. Right. So now, Gideon is on task. So now, Gideon is in doubt because this was a very unique situation. See, Gideon's father, Joash. Come on, man. See, these people Come on. angered God because what they did was after being delivered out of bondage from Egypt, they're in the land that God promised them, but they went, plain talk, they went <laughs> whoring out the under God, other gods. Yes, yes, yes. That's what they did. Yeah. We're we not going to cover that up. That's, that, listen, that's what they did. Yes, sir. Now, I delivered you, I've been good to you, I gave you what you needed, and you running after somebody else? That ain't gonna work for God. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So, Gideon's father worshiped and paid tribute to this pagan God, right. Baal. And 
God told Gideon, tear that thing. Tear it down. Tear down the altar. And burn that. Mm -hmm. And put something up from there. Well, Gideon was afraid. You know, so Gideon has the kind he has to talk with God. He says, I'm the least. My God. My tribe. My I'm God. the least of my household. Jesus. And I'm scared. Do it scared. So that, that recurring thing, I'm not sufficient. Yeah. There it is. But Gideon was obedient. So he was afraid to do it in the daylight. So he did it at night. Well. But he did it. He right. did it. Again, we are church folk. We know how that story ends. Yes. My last example, Isaiah. Right. So, yet again, the Israelites show it all again. <laughs> Anger God again because they were evil. Yes. And their offspring was great. And they were corrupt. And God gave Israel, I'm sorry, Isaiah, a vision. Come on. In the temple. And this vision foretold of the demise of the people. Isaiah. I'm feeling too good. Why am I even dreaming these things? Mm. It's going to make me very unpopular. Mm. Yeah. And I surely don't want to go to the people with that. So much so, he tells God, I'm doomed. Everything I say is sinful. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so are the words of everyone around me. Right. Yeah. Right. Yet, I have seen the King, the Lord all power. Isaiah was known as the prophetic mm. prophet. Yes. See, Isaiah was given a vision and foretold of Christ before he was even born. That's right. So, when I think about the three examples that I just gave you, I think about myself personally. I had other plans. I, I wouldn't try to do this. <laughs> Come on now. I was living my life as it was suited for me. Right? <laughs> God interrupted. Apparently, God felt different. Yes, sir. And this is not an easy life. No, sir. Because you gotta make some changes. Yeah. Yeah. And you gotta, you can't, as, as, as they say, you can't be willy-nilly about stuff. Yeah. Like, you, you gotta stand on some things. <laughs> when it ain't popular to stand on well, things. Yeah. Right. And right. the thing about this life is that it's an honest life. Amen. Yes, sir. It's a guilt-free life. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. It's a forever good life. Yes. But it's not easy. No, not at all. Not because with this life comes accountability. Mm. Yes. Mm. And accountability doesn't always feel good. Not at all. And it ain't no shortcuts to accountability. God said, don't worry. I've accepted people worse than you. Word. Keep coming and keep showing up. Oh, I, have yeah, I have oh, you. Yeah. I have you. I have you. My God. My God. Obedience to God's word is absolute honoring 
to him. Yes. And it takes God's will at its center. Mm. I told you I wouldn't be before you long. That's my talk. Amen. Thank you.